Hey y'all, this is my 2007 BMW RT. <clears throat> Just wanted to give you my impressions and chit chat a little bit about riding bikes too. And um, just my impressions of this and how much I like it and my experiences. So my favorite bikes are, I like sport tours and big old Harley cruisers and, Amer and Indians too. But I've ridden everything from um, Ducati to Triumph to, I love Kawasaki and to Harleys and Indians and they're all amazing you know it's hard to find one you like I think my overall favorite cruiser is the big bagger Harleys or the Indian big baggers but I am looking to get a K bike instead of this one I do like this bike but they're so affordable I want to get a little bit newer K version the GT 1600 not because this one's bad it's just I just like I'm a K bike guy I know there's R bike guys and K bike guys. I'm kind of a K bike guy. All right, let's take a little look around. But I just like can't decide which bike I like. So my favorite naked bike is the Kawasaki ZR 1200, Z ZRX 1200. Oh, I can't think of the name. It's a green one. It's that Eddie Lawson throwback. Great stuff. I bought this used. This bike is lowered. That's one of the reasons I'm doing it because. So you can see a lowered bike. It's hard to see exactly what it looks like lowered, but um, I am 5'8 with a 31 inch inseam. That's when I get my pants, it's 31. And my, my legs are about an inch longer than average. And then I can sit more than enough foot space. It's probably even, I'd probably say it's an inch lower than I would have gotten it, but someone had it done. Someone had it professionally done with an O, I think an Olean's version through the dealership down here in San Antonio. I bought it used with 30,000 miles on it from this lovely lady up in, well, in near here. So she was just getting out of the hobby. <clears throat> Anyways, great bike, man. All right, so I had one of these years ago. And I used to ride it, and I bought it for the utility purposes, not because I thought I was in love with it. I bought it because it was just like this with the, um, oh, look, the neighbor's coming out. Because of the bags and the heated grips and the comfort, because I would ride it from all around Savannah's low country. That's the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. I'd ride it about two hours in the morning on the commute two hours back for every other day for about a year so I needed a big bike like this that was comfortable and um, it, it was great but in those days I did a video just like this unprofessional and handheld which is as you can tell and and I just complained about the thing online and it was a 2005, I believe, or 2006, maybe 2006. And it was, the problem with it, okay, so what I complained about then, and some of the stuff I complain about now, it was too tall for me. And I never felt comfortable. People would talk about how agile it is. And I never enjoyed that because I was too um, afraid of dropping it. And I never did drop it, but I was just so, I would baby it, you know. So too tall, even with a lowered seat. Um, I complained that I thought it was underpowered, which is a, um, don't, that's not true. But at the time I thought it was, I was used to coming off of like a Kawasaki sport bike, like a Z, ZR 1200. And it was like, and I was babying the R motor. I thought it was, oh, it's a two banger. So, um, It's a two banger, so I better be gentle with it like a Harley and go low RPMs. But that's nothing like the case here. This is a sport. And then it took me to, after I got a Ducati years later, an ST3, which I, by the way, loved, which is a two banger, two cylinder, a V twin. Um, I rode that because it, it looked sporty. I figured you could ride it sporty, which you can. And it gave me 
the comfort to know that I could do that. And I realized, oh, I, sh I was babying that RT the whole time. So I thought it was underpowered and it's certainly not. And I thought it was a bit plasticky, like it, has, it had a scooter feel to it, which, yeah, it's not the sexiest bike in the world. Um, especially when you compare it to Indians or Harleys or Triumphs, but, um, I, and, and that's about it. I just hated the thing. Finally got sold it to a guy in Iowa, put it on a, shipped it up. He still has it. That was seven years ago, if not more than that. So, um. But now I just think it's the greatest bike, man. And and it's so quick and agile. And I I never would have said that until I now I get in this thing and it, it moves, it's quick off the line, like you gotta scoot off a light and get moving, get out of the pack and get get to safe a safe area on the highway, let's say, and really scoot around town. Amazing. You wanna do a three point turn and then scoot out of there, brrr, brrr, man, it's gone. Um, and you can really rev it pretty good. I don't think it gives you the joy of a sport bike as far as the revving and the, that, of that windy inline four or even a triple, but, um, it, it's so deceivingly fast because I, I got, oh yeah, when I had it before I would, I got two tickets on it within a month because I just didn't realize how fast I was going, which I don't, which maybe that brings me to the, um, <clears throat> speedometer you know, one thing I would complain about, which I know they fixed, is like this whole dash. It's a little hard to see. You can see now it's right in the glare. But this morning I was just had to look three times at the clock to see what time it was. So um, glare, I'm not even going to. Let's see if we can get it. And that's just two. It's just it's midday here. It's like it's almost one. So anyways, so that's the stuff I complain about. But now I love it for agility, speed, comfort. Certainly the luxuries, everything's quality, like everything from the grips to the, these are um, aftermarket, everything. It's just premium. And once you ride a premium bike, like maybe it's a Harley Bagger or a Chieftain or a, a nice BMW or some kind of premium bike, it's so hard to go back to a non-premium bike. Everything seems so cheap and you know what I'm talking about. So I'm not going to go over the specs of this bike. Because you, because there's probably more professional. There are more professional um, videos talking about it, what the exact specs on it. But I want to just tell you what it's like to ride one, and I love it. But that is because it's lowered. If it were not lowered, I would not. I just wouldn't feel comfortable on it. I would be just insecure on it and all that jazz. I do like the K bikes because this KGT is also low. The the LT version the gtl is um low i tried it already and i'm totally looking forward to getting one but in the meantime this is going to be amazing i do have a bag for this um i should have put it on it's, it's it holds you can jump inside it and use it as a sleeping bag it's so big um i i used to use it every day maybe you agree it, the back of it comes up to and sometimes when you want to lean, especially at low speeds, you're leaning forward and, and like leaning into your bike and kind of putting the weight forward. It, it prevents you or even pushes on your chest. I thought it was a little big, but I think on a long journey, it's great because it can hold everything and it's, it's amazing. It's sturdy on there. It locks in and hey, who doesn't love these attractive rails, huh? <laughs> okay. That was one thing cosmetically I didn't like, but this is, you don't buy this bike for the looks, man. You buy it for the function, right? BMWs are more form, form follows function, so, and people appreciate that. You can spot a, a BMW rider almost as much as you can spot a Harley rider a mile away, just walking down, walking into a gas station. You're like, oh, there's a BMW rider. They got all the tech going. They're usually slender and tall. I lived in Seattle, and, um, there was a lot of BMW riders there, probably more than proportionally than any other part of the country. And they, uh, everyone rode those big adventure bikes. And it was always these Microsoft engineers that were doing it. That was cool. I enjoyed that. And 
a lot of these RTs were there too. Boy, they, people, those RTs and those big adventure bikes are just so popular. Anyways, um, and I used to ride my commute, man. You're, you're going to die. Like my commute was in the foothills of the Cascade Mountains um, in this beautiful riding area. And I would ride every morning to work. Um, not on an RT. This was on another bike, a, um, a Kawasaki Concourse, which is, um, I love the older ones I love. And, um, and it was just great riding and every morning and, and it was just the fog, you know, ruin, all these windy roads through the ravines and passing over little brooks and rivers and to get to work. And the only, you know, the only thing, as you know, as a motorcycle rider, 40% of the time you smell the most amazing things when you're riding and then 60% it's either stuff you don't want to be smelling um, and that one was I would go through this dairy farm and get hit with a manure smell which is it was you know and it got so strong that it almost was a little it would make you cough and it had this ammonia this pungent ammonia kind of organic smell to it sour and it would get up into your nose and um and it taught me to be able to sniff out manure smell in dairy products now. So sometimes I'll get a cheese and and I know what that peculiar smell is. It's just the, it's going, it can only be one thing, which is people are putting manure in my milk, you know, which is odd to think. <laughs> just, okay, hey, I put these mirrors on to change the subject. I put these mirrors on myself, about 150 bucks for the set on eBay. You just plop them in there, boink, and you bolt them down with a, like an Allen wrench or maybe a hex wrench or something. I can't remember. Um, so easy. It took me under 10 minutes to get them on, and they're solid. They don't go anywhere, and I use them 90, 100% of the time. I was using those mirrors there. I am not satisfied with those mirrors. You have to look down too much, and... I thought the view you're getting was not what I really wanted. I just felt my searching the mirror a lot more and not having the, really the sense of um, what was going on around me as much as just the good old fashioned mirror like that. So I would suggest getting some of those. They don't even vibrate. They don't shake or it's not, a, there's no, it's a slam dunk. Um, there's these engine guards here. I'm pointing, where's my, oh, there's my finger, um, right there. I like those. I didn't put those on myself. The bike has been lowered, uh, as you know, so I'm sure that's a new kickstand. 2.5 inches, man. Um, what else is awesome about this bike? So these bags, lockable, removable, as you know, and that they're amazing. Let's look at this. When I bought this, they had the key. They lost the key, and the box was locked. So... I called around and the dealer, one dealer's like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a new key and unlock and all the blah, blah, blah for like under 300. Another guy said under 200, another dealer. I, I saw him like, well, maybe a locksmith can help. So out the door on a locksmith with a new key that does not match, um, just some key, is um, like $65 out the door. Which I, 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 so I went through that. And this works just fine. So let's look inside what you can hold in here. So I got a full face, basically like one of those collapsible full faces. And that fits in there nicely. I bet you I can get two in there. Locks up. Amazing bag right there. Amazing. Hey man, let's start it up. I do like that boxer motor. I have a Subaru with a boxer motor now, and I appreciate the heck out of it. I didn't like it before, but um, you can just hear it. I know you know what one sounds like, but Awesome. 
work great, works great. I have it set to comfort mode. I will say that lowering the bike is fine, but when I have a passenger, I think this is an aftermarket seat uh, windshield, by the way, and it's dirty. I will say that um, my girlfriend rides in the back. She likes this. She leans into this and hangs on here. She feels great. She's comfortable. But the, um, the lowering of the seat, even in a moderate bump going into a turn, it'll scrape a little bit. So it's lower than you probably want. And if you have a passenger, you're not going to like that. So maybe if you have it lowered, just... Don't be so aggressively lowered. This guy works great for putting your cell phone in and um, getting your, having your cell phone be able to sit on there. And I have a big Note cell phone, and it works fine for that. And I have a big fat Note that's like extra wide. I don't think you can get any more than that in there, but it works. This does come with bags, these bags that liners that go inside here. I don't have, I have them at home. I should, maybe we'll make a separate video for that, just to so see you could pack them up and um, the seat is pretty comfortable a little more sporty it's a great foam it's like one of those quality foams that you sit on and you know it's a expensive foam under there it's comfortable but I was on it for about three hours and I started getting a little sore back there so um, it's good enough for what I do Maybe long distances, you might not want to do that. You might want to upgrade it or something. All right. Cruise control is, is great. Well, do you want to hear anything about it? anything else? Let's see. This bike moves, man. Great wind protection. And... Um, Okay, thanks for watching. You don't need to subscribe or anything like that or because um, I don't have ads on here and there shouldn't be any ads when they when this thing starts up because I'm not getting paid for them. So thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.